If you're a seven or eight figure entrepreneur or investor, you may like the idea of living in Europe with all the creature comforts, all the conveniences, the romance, the chance to get a second citizenship. And yet you may think, I don't want to pay European taxes. So today I'm going to share with you five lesser known tax strategies for living in Europe for less. So let's talk about ways that you may have not heard of, of how you can live in Europe, pay less tax than what you're paying now. Even if you're coming from another country in Europe, you can use these strategies and you can certainly use them if you're from the US, Canada, Australia, or anywhere else. The benefits of living in Europe, obviously there are pros and cons, but you can work towards a great quality second citizenship, you have a great quality of life, and you're opening up a lot of opportunities for your family. So if Europe's right for you, let's talk about five ways that you can do so with less tax than you perhaps thought possible. If it's your first time here, I'm Andrew Henderson, founder of Nomad Capitalist. We're a boutique consulting firm that helps seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally reduce their taxes, diversify and protect their assets, get second passports, and just generally protect themselves, their families, and their freedom from all the craziness going on in the world right now. We also host Nomad Capitalist Live, an annual event open to absolutely everybody. So let's start with tip number one. And this is very simply, don't always look at the headline tax rate. And so I have said, numerous times in the decade I've been doing this, hey, you know, uh, people should check out Italy for tax savings. And somebody will say, I'm living in Rome and I'm paying a fortune. This is stupid advice. Here's why that is misguided. Italy, for example, has a number of tax incentives that if you haven't lived in Italy and you haven't paid taxes there uh, in recent years, you can go and take advantage of a special uh, exemption because even a high tax, high debt country like Italy is smarter than the country where you live the US, Canada, Australia, which offers nothing to encourage anybody to come. At least Italy realizes, hey, we gotta bring some money into this joint. And so something's better than nothing. And so they've basically gone and put together you know, 50, 70, 90% reductions. They put together special deals for retirees. And if you're a, a high earner, they put together a lump sum program, which uh, borrows from what Switzerland originally did. So where you can pay 100,000 euros flat and with a few limitations, but fewer limitations than a lot of other European programs, you can make all the money outside of Italy that you want. And so, sure, if you have been living in Italy your entire life, that's not going to be available to you. But if you're sitting in another country, you can move to Italy and take advantage of that system or any of the other tax exemptions. And so you would look at the headline tax rates and say, this guy talking about Italy being tax friendly is crazy. You would look at countries like Ireland, the UK, Greece, Portugal, and say, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. But Fortunately, it does. And so the headline tax rate doesn't define it if you have, uh, for example, uh, let's talk about Eastern Europe, Georgia, territorial tax system. If your money's earned overseas, often non-taxable. If you have a salary, uh, depending on the source, it could potentially be taxed as low as 1% up to a certain amount. And so two different schemes right there. Territorial, pretty straightforward. The territorial tax system basically says money earned outside of the country, we don't tax. It's relatively rare in Europe. You also have programs like the lump sum, Switzerland, Italy, uh, Greece has a program. You have exemptions where for a certain number of years you can pay dramatically less. Again, it's not perfect. It's not like living in Dubai, but a system like Portugal allows you to dramatically reduce taxes on business, investments, what have you. Countries like Ireland, the UK, Malta, Cyprus have programs for people who aren't domiciled there, and so you can dramatically reduce your taxes that way. Sure, their tax rates are high. And by the way, in some of these cases, you may be subject to those high tax rates, but only on a certain percentage of your income. And so one way you can arbitrage this is you make a million dollars a year, you live on $200,000 a year, you may be subject to the taxes on 200,000. And so maybe you pay 45% on 200,000. That's 90 grand on a million. If living in Europe, working towards a second passport, great quality of life, English speaking countries in some case, if that's worth it, you've got a 9% tax rate when everyone else is paying 50. Now, does that seem fair? Yeah, because you're bringing in the spending power of someone who, you know, who wouldn't live there if you had to pay 50%. So the country's getting your money being spent in the economy and they're getting $90,000 in tax money from you. Uh, so number one, look beyond the headline tax rate. Number two, one strategy for folks who want to live in a country like Switzerland, Switzerland has a program like that. You can basically go into Switzerland, they'll figure out, hey, what does it cost you to live? And uh, okay, here's your tax bill every year. Not every canton in Switzerland offers this, so you can't live in Zurich, for example, but you can live largely in some of the interior parts, the French speaking parts, you can basically pay a certain amount. However, if you are a foreigner, not just a Swiss foreigner, but if you're not European, if you're not part of an EU or European economic area country, you're gonna to have to pay double what folks who are from those countries pay in order to get the residence permit that facilitates your tax deal. And so you've gotta add double the value. How can you do that and how can you uh, fix that? You can get either citizenship by descent if you're fortunate enough, but that may take a while to get. It may take you a couple years to get Italian citizenship, for example, if you've got an Irish grandparent, uh, if you have uh, ancestors from Greece or 
most countries in Europe offer some path that if you have a parent, grandparent, great-grandparent, or in some cases even further back, you can get their citizenship. Now, it may take you a while. However, what you can also do is look at a country like Malta that has a uh, an indirect citizenship program where it's not exactly citizenship by investment, uh, but it's an 18-month path to citizenship by making a donation. 750,000 euros. You can add on spouses and dependents for 50,000 euros each. Let's just say you're single, 750,000 euros. If you're looking to move to a, a very nice part of Switzerland, maybe your tax bill all in would be half a million dollars, half a million euros, let's call it. All right. If you could cut that in half by being a European citizen, well, now you just got a return on investment in three years on getting that Maltese citizenship and then using that to not have to get permission to move to Switzerland. You just go there uh, and then you get the tax deal at half the price that you would if you were just American or Australian or whatever it is that you're coming from. And so that's a three-year return on investment. Plus, you get a passport uh, in a not tax in crazy country, but with the benefits of the European Union for free, basically, right? So you, you get paid back on your passport in three years, and then uh, you have the passport for the rest of your life. You can pass it down to your kids, etc. So that's one strategy that you can use to lower taxes in Switzerland if you're not European. Another strategy that you can use, uh, number three, is living in Portugal and using the NHR program, which is their 10-year tax incentive program. A lot of people misunderstand it. And so you cannot bring a company from uh, the UAE, for example, UAE Free Zone or a Cayman Islands company or pretty much any of the companies that are uh, considered tax havens. They are on the naughty list in uh, Portugal. So one reason that I mentioned that Italy was a little bit more flexible is not only do they invoke the naughty list a little bit less in their lump sum tax regime, but their naughty list is actually a little bit more flexible. Uh, but Portugal, you might think, oh, well, I can't have a, a company um, you know, in a tax haven, so I have to incorporate in Portugal. No, you can actually use a strategy, depending on your level of involvement in the business, depending on what the business does, you could potentially have your business uh, elsewhere in a whitelisted jurisdiction in uh, Europe or elsewhere, and you could pay a nominal amount of tax and still take advantage of Portugal's tax incentives. And so people think, I'm going to move to Portugal, and then they say, oh, but I can't have my company anywhere good. You can still pay in the single digits in tax, living in Portugal, taking advantage of the NHR. I think a lot of people misunderstand. They think they have to pay 20%, or they think they've got to pay full tax and just only take out certain parts of it tax-free. You can dramatically reduce that, and people often don't realize that. Number four is you can use what they call the Estonian model to keep money in the company and distribute it later. And so if you're interested in tax deferral, let's say you want to keep reinvesting in your business. You've got a business that requires cash flow and you don't mind paying a certain amount of tax for the privilege of living in Europe. Estonia, for example, if you set up a company and you hire some people and you put some money in there, potentially you can get a residence permit. It's not as good for working towards citizenship because there's no dual citizenship and you've got to learn Estonian and it takes a while. But if you want, for example, to live in Estonia, or if you just like the idea of uh, deferral while having that connection to Europe, maybe you have customers who want to pay you in Europe. Uh, maybe you, for whatever reason, need to use a European structure. Uh, maybe you're going to go live in Portugal. You can use the Estonian model, and it's not just Estonia, where basically there's no corporate tax until you actually take the money out. And so you can just basically roll it over. Now, if you are running a cash flow business and you constantly want to take dividends, this is not going to be as advantageous. But if you're running a business where you just keep recycling the money, uh, Estonia does this. You've also seen uh, the nearby countries in the Baltics also do this. You've seen Georgia adopt a uh, similar version of this. And you've seen North Macedonia adopt a version of this in the Balkans. And so you have a number of countries that have basically said, hey, listen, if you want to keep your money in the business, we're not going to bother you until you take it out. And for certain kind of entrepreneurs, that could be valuable. A lot of people aren't aware of how that works. You get that deferral. Uh, the fifth way that you can reduce your taxes is for smaller businesses. And so this is maybe not for a seven or eight figure entrepreneur, but some of them are more aggressive. So Romania, for example, you can run a business. Uh, they've now reduced it to half a million you can basically pay 1% uh, on that at the corporate tax rate. Um, Armenia has a similar program. If you're running a very small business, you can pay zero, and there are other uh, exemptions above uh, that. Poland has a deal. You can get up into the six figures and uh, dramatically reduce the taxes you're paying uh, down at the single digits and, and have some deferral as well on micro businesses. And so half a million um, is not really a tiny business. Uh, but, you know, if you're, if you're building your business, that's a way that you could, again, in some of these countries, you hire one or two people, you start your company, you show a little bit of profit, you can get a residence permit there. And so it's a trade-off when you're going to Europe. You can get some really high quality passports if you're willing to live in a country, learn the language, put in your time there. And so if you're willing to pay some tax, 
that might be a better path for some entrepreneurs who are scaling up their business than going and investing half a million euros, for example, in a golden visa that doesn't require them to be there. If you want to live in Europe and you're willing to pay some tax, you can use a micro-business structure. You can use a deferral structure. You can use an NHR structure with a company elsewhere. Or you can live in a place like Switzerland and you can cut your taxes by making an upfront investment. But never look at the headline tax rates. Always look at what the incentives are. A lot of countries are rolling out deals, and as much as Europe is regulated, as much as Europe does have high taxes, you're seeing more countries realizing, unlike in the US, Canada, Australia, and elsewhere in the world, that they need to be competitive. And so before you write off Europe, if it's on your list, don't write it off before you realize what you could actually be paying in tax. For a lot of entrepreneurs and for a lot of folks just living there, it's less than what you might think.